Matt Stevens and Kelly Lyle here from the Colorado and we just got back from Mike Bobo's spring football press conference. Bobo's entering his, his second spring as Colorado State's head coach and a little excitement for him. You know, last year was a lot, he said, coach led. They had to install a new system, new faces around. This year he's hoping things are more player led. You get the quarterbacks to really take up some, some leadership roles along with some of the veterans. Yeah, I think that's a big thing, and you know that's a tough thing, especially you know Marty English talked about it. Certainly, defensive coordinator Marty's not a rah rah fire you up kind of guy like Tyson Summers maybe was, and so they're going to really need that on the defensive end, the players to kind of generate that emotion, that accountability to get guys in the right frame of mind when they take the practice field every day, when they're out warming up for games, because you just can't count on the coaches to do that on offense. Certainly, the quarterbacks are going to have to. Do some of that. That's not really in Nick Stevens' nature, but it's something he had to kind of learn last year. Uh, Faton Bauda, obviously, having been with uh, Bobo at Georgia, gets a little bit of that sense, but he was never a major player at Georgia, so it's going to be a new thing for him, I think, too, but he at least probably has a better idea of what Mike Bobo's talking about. It's going to be interesting to see Jake Bennett on the O-line. He's counting on to be one of those guys. There's going to have to be some of those players to really step up and, uh, and take over leadership of this team, and I think that's what successful programs have, and that's why Mike Bobo really wants to shift it off as quickly as he can to have the players bringing that energy and that leadership. And speaking of the quarterbacks, we look at the depth chart, and the first name listed, you know, first position is, is quarterbacks. And the number one name right now is Nick Stevens, the starter, heading into spring. And I asked Bobo, is that just because you had to put out a depth chart, or, or is this your guy? And he said, you know, heading into spring, Nick Stevens is going to be our starting quarterback. But, you know, that could change as, as spring progresses. Yeah, he really did. And I think he really wants that competition at every position. But at quarterback, it's critical, I think. And, and uh, you know, not the competition of who the starter's going to be like it was last year where it was almost like everybody was afraid to make mistakes. I think they're more concerned with this group about let's push each other to be better. And I think bringing in Fatone Bauda, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but helps with that. He's a guy that's a graduate transfer from Georgia. He knows Mike Bobo well. He knows the system. Also, they've got, you know, true freshman in Colin Hill, one of the top high school quarterbacks in the country last year. And then J.C. Robles, who was around last year watching things run in the scout team. It should be an interesting uh, a, kind of a battle and see how that approaches. I'll bet you Nick Stevens will still be the starter when all is said and done. But I think these guys are going to make Nick a better quarterback than he otherwise might be if they just handed him the position. And I think about the, what, what Coach Bobo would talk about was he'll, act, he'll also make Colin Hill a better quarterback in the end. The freshman Colin Hill is here this spring and uh, said that he, he's taken some, some cues from Aaron Murray at Georgia when he learned from him. But when, when Bobo's up in the office, he always sees Fatone and Colin looking at film, even drawing up some plays. And that, that's a big leadership role for a guy who wants to be the starting quarterback, has one college start to his name, what didn't go so well, the rivalry game against the University of Florida. But guy who's just trying to help. Yeah, it really is. And I think he wants the Fatone. It's kind of like challenging him almost to be Colin Hill's mentor mm -hmm. and say, you know, this is, we need this from you. And it seems like at least so far, he said he's happy with the results of what he's seen. Obviously, they're only a month into off-season conditioning type work. We'll see as, you know, they go through spring practices, they're out on the field, they're competing when they go into summer or fall camp. There's a lot still to be developed, but I think he wants that kind of mentorship role right now. And, uh, and he thinks probably that it'll make them both better because, uh, you know, coaches love to tell you, anybody will tell you, when you teach something to somebody, you learn it better yourself. So I think it's something that could benefit Fatone as well. And before we wrap up, a uh, big thing we noticed were well, a couple position changes. One, specifically wide receiver Jordan Baden, who's a guy who, who's, you know, been stepping, you know, getting a little better year by year, always been kind of trapped behind Rashard Higgins on the depth chart. All of a sudden, his senior season, it's spring, He's switching the cornerback. He's 6'3". He's a big cornerback. Marcus Wilson, cornerback, switches to wide receiver. It's a move that might not last, but they want to see what, what Jordan Vaden can do. Yeah, and I really think as much as anything, maybe it's a way to make sure they can try to get Jordan Vaden on the field more because when you look at that receiver core, even after losing... Joe Hansley, Richard Higgins, there's still a lot of experience, a lot of talent back. You look across the board, Deontay Gaines, Xavier Williams, Sammy Long, Elroy Masters is going to 
be limited in the spring because of an injury, but he should be fine by the season. So I think it's also a chance to let's make sure we get our best guys on the field and Jordan Baden may have a better chance to play for us on defense than on offense. And certainly cornerback is a position they need to improve at, they need to get better at. So it's probably too just a chance of let's pull out all the stops and do what we can to find a couple really good cornerbacks to take us through this season. And if one of them's a guy that's playing wide receiver now, we got to give him that shot. A couple quick notes on the depth chart. If any of you guys looked at it, there's uh, Deontay Kleinberg, not listed at linebacker. That's just because he, he suffered an injury, undisclosed injury during the offseason workouts. A uh, non contact guy this spring. And St. Elroy Masters, who dislocated, was a, no, broke his collarbone uh, last year um, during the season. He's going to participate in practice, but is also a non contact guy, not listed on the depth chart as wide receiver. But they expect. They're sure hoping that he'll be back for fall camp. So for Kelly Lyle, I'm Matt Stevens. Be sure to stay tuned to Colorado.com for all your CSU Rams football needs.